Welcome to the Cornish Workshop's next project, a 1935 Mollycroft roofed caravan. This is going to be quite a mammoth restoration. The old girl is in quite a rough state. As you can see, there's quite a bit of uh, rot and even more so as we go around the other side of the vehicle. The roof is in very poor state at each end. Quite a few of the uh, main braces will have to be replaced and the entire roof coverings. When we pan down you can see that most of the front frame will need replacing. I shall use probably uh, laminated oak to make up the uh, framework. As you can see it's got quite an interesting tow hitch. It's a Brockhouse tow hitch, axle and chassis. And this can date the caravan um, to 1935-36 because it's the uh, that type of hitch was only made in those particular years. Um, and I've researched the patent dates on the various um, hitches that was produced by Brockhouse and this falls between 35 36 and in 37 they changed them to a different, um, slightly different construction. So if we come back up through and we go to the other side of the caravan you can see this is probably the uh, the worst side for reconstruction. This entire corner will have to be rebuilt and um, I'll show you um, a little bit more in detail when we get inside but if we pan down through you can see that the previous owner has taken off uh, all the outside and um, most of the inside panels. Most of the actual framework though is in very good condition and it's only a certain amount of it that will need replacing. As usual with these old caravans, the four corners, the four corner posts will need um, replacing and quite a few bits of the roof timbers. But the actual main structure is reasonably sound. This is the only um, corner that still has a surviving hockey stick framework on it which is very very handy because um, that can be used as a pattern to reproduce the uh, replacement ones which I'll be making in laminated oak. And we come through the back end which is in reasonably tidy condition. Um, you can see the framework is savable I think. Now if we uh, find our way inside with a rather nice 30s door handle, caravan handle there in chromed or probably nickel plated brass which will look nice when it's restored. Now we uh, make our way inside. So if we uh, start with the doorway we can see there is a sweeping hatch in the uh, floor which accommodates in a coconut mat on top of the uh, f trap. Still have the original one as well which is quite amazing really. So if we pan back through and if we look at that you can see at the top there's a speaker grill for a radio which fitted inside that compartment. The compartment itself has had a, a lot of work done to it over the years and it's uh, the radio has been taken out, new door added and a lot of um, very poor work done to it to uh, to put in uh, new timber and plywood which um, all needs to be replaced and redone. And I'll source a replacement echo radio to put in there because if we uh, go a little bit closer and open the door here. Move this rubbish out of the way. If you can see that, that's the original Echo Radio 
label which uh, gave the make, model um, and date of the radio. Unfortunately most of the label has been uh, destroyed over the years but you can still see it says Echo Works South End on Sea and a few other little bits of uh, printing there which is quite interesting. So we come back again. The windows were replaced in the 60s. The, um, the original windows were sliding windows, a bit like a sash window. So they'll have to be reinstated. Um, as you can see the timber roof at the front is in shocking state. But rather a nice little gas lamp which will come up nice. Um, we can pan down through. All of this section here will have to be replaced. It's um, been a, it's absolutely riddled with woodworm. So those two doors and um, parts of the framework there will have to be completely replaced. As will some of the framework underneath the cooker. The um, the door there is savable, but the framework isn't. And if we go up and see the lantern roof section, all that section there on both sides will have to be replaced as it's delaminated and um, quite weak. So we'll take out the uh, take out the lantern um, lights uh, and uh, replace them into some uh, new ply. <coughs> Now, while we're looking at the lantern Molly Croft, um, it's quite interesting and I've never ever seen this before. The actual lantern windows pull inwards, not outwards. Now, I've seen a few pictures of uh, caravans with that on, but never actually seen it in the flesh, so to speak. It's quite a rare um, system. Uh, very interesting. Okay, now we come back to the cooker which is a marvellous little um, setup. It's uh, all encased in aluminium and there we have an airing uh, panel shelf. We come down to the cooker which is a beautiful enamelled cast iron with brass fittings. That'll look absolutely splendid when it's uh, restored. And the, uh, the actual woodwork most of it is savable. There's a bit of worm here and there, but it's um, quite nicely done. It's a beautiful little setup, and it looks very much like a uh, a bookcase bureau when it's uh, all enclosed up. So let me put that together. Now, if we stand back, it's all nicely enclosed in a beautiful cabinet. Now if we pan along a little bit we come to another cupboard and some drawers. Perfectly savable condition here. It needs a little bit of work but nothing nothing um, insurmountable. The, uh, the wall panels might be able to save a couple of them but most of them are fairly shot. And as we see, if you can have a look here, there are, um, there is a couple of um, fittings which hold the table in on the wall. There's a couple of lugs there which one side of the table uh, catches on. And then you've got a little slider here which comes down and holds the table in. Quite a nifty little setup that. <coughs> and you can see where the table is. There's a slightly well, quite marked difference in colour between the the uh, the exposed panel and the uh, covered panel, which gives a very good idea of the original colouring. So, if we move down now, we can see the uh, bunk come extendable bed that moves out to meet the other side, making up the two berth bed. All right, so if we pan up to the other side of the roof. And the other Mollycroft panel, that as well needs replacing as it's delaminated and um, 
in places if we come up through to the other side you can see where it's uh, actually got holes in it where it's rotten and woodwormy. One quite nice touch is the um, end panels for the bunks. They've got quite a nice um, curve to the uh, to the end panels and that is uh, beaded in a nice oak, fine oak beading. So hopefully um, that particular one is saveable. But if we pan over to this one and see that it's quite rotten and riddled with woodworm in uh, half of it so that will have to be replaced. Now as we go along you can see there's another <coughs> chest of drawers but this one is a dressing table so if we lift up the top we can see there's a dressing table there with a little um, painted in platform for various um, knick-knacky things and then you've got a, two drawers underneath and uh, a big cupboard which uh, also covers the wheel arch. Now this is the wardrobe although it may look in quite nice condition the actual door itself is completely riddled with woodworm. I don't know if you can see it or not but there we go. I'll try and see the absolute amazing amount of woodworm in it and it's completely lost its structural integrity. Um, but if you look inside, there's a nice big mirror there, and also most of the the, uh, the fittings for the hanging um, is still there, and the rest of it is in reasonably savable condition. So that's good. Surprisingly underneath is in excellent condition. It's been painted um, originally. It's tongue and groove floor in a um, quite a turpentine pine so the worm hasn't even touched that thank goodness. Um, and the um, the axles, brakes, bearings, everything is in absolutely fantastic condition. And there's a shot of the actual chassis with the bowed section over the uh, the spring. Right, you should be able to see there the back plate of the brakes in, is made of aluminium, cast aluminium and um, the actual brakes are themselves, the brake shoes are aluminium castings on aluminium and brass pivots. I've taken one of the hubs off and the bearings which have brass or phosphor bronze cages are in absolutely amazing condition. Beautiful unworn bearings which is uh, great to have because they might very well be a hard to obtain imperial size. Hopefully it won't take too long and she'll be as good as new again.